What is up, dudes? Lady dudes, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. I apologize for the hair business today. I'm looking like a crazy person. Anyway, this weekend, uh, we had the UDS Invitational uh, in Las Vegas, which is not a premier YCS level event, but the UDSs do usually bring out some very big dueling names, so if you are able to top, it usually is a pretty big feat. Uh, one, because it cuts to top 16 to make your top cut, and two, just because the pool of players is like so such well-known players because they are good. They have proven themselves to be able to do it on the, uh, on the biggest stage there, so it is no small feat to get a, to earn a top in this kind of event. Anyway, when we're talking about the results, I mean, you cut to straight to top 16, uh, and we see something different than what we've seen as of recently. Um, I mean, maybe this is something to do with that we don't have a top 32, and maybe we would see a ton of variation, maybe cutting a top 32, but as far as the top 16, the official top cut goes, we've got seven Salaman greats, seven Sky Strikers, one Danger Thunder Dragon, and one Danger Zombie. Obviously, there's one you know, elephant in the room being Danger Zombie. And I've looked, and maybe we'll get a deck profile in the next couple of days from somebody, but uh, I did not see a deck profile yet for this deck, but I'm curious to see how it functioned to be able to perform this well. <coughs> and other than that, the craziest part is just the fact that there was only one Danger Thunder Dragon relative to 14 combined Striker and Salamangrates. I mean, are we seeing everything kind of shaping up that with Salamangrate having a decent Thunder Dragon matchup, that Thunder Dragon's like falling off the map. And I think there are a couple reasons for this. I don't think you should panic if you're a Thunder Dragon player and you're looking at a, an, an event coming up specifically. <clears throat> I don't think that this is abandoned shit. First things first, this is top 16. Like, if we had seen two Thunder Dragons, we might have just been like, oh, okay, like two made it in, like top 16, that's pretty good. You know, one eighth of all the decks in top 16. Not bad. Uh, so we're only one off from that. I guarantee you there are more in the top 32. I did not see the top 32, so maybe... Um, I thought there was a list somewhere. I'm looking on this sidebar. I don't see it here. Maybe I'll look in just a second. Um, but yeah, I think this can be att attributed to a couple things here. The first things first is, like I said, Salamangrates have a pretty good matchup against Thunder Dragon overall. Uh, it seems very dice rolly, where if you're a Thunder Dragon and you win the die roll, and you're able to set up, you know, not only Thunder Dragon, Colossus, but also some possibly like one or two negates, that could be very tough for Salamangrates to play through, any deck to play through, really. Um, but the other thing for me is that we thought there was a triangle, right? We thought that this was going to be more or less like Salamangrates are solid against Thunder Dragons. Thunder Dragons are really solid against Stri Sky Striker. And Sky Striker is pretty solid against Salamangrate. None of them really dominate each other entirely. I mean, Thunder Dragon is pretty strong against Striker, but they have outs. Uh, and if they draw them, like it, it, it is what it is. We see everybody's probably side decking Droll and Lock, which gives you, a, you know. A really strong card to be able to shut down danger slash you know thunder dragon combos uh, very early so there's just like it, none of them are completely dominant but they do have like an advantage over the others so um i think that's what we're seeing here but i think the biggest thing is that salamangri is by far the most represented deck just because it is so cheap all the players that didn't have the money to play a, an entirely competitive deck now can because Salamangrate is a structure deck that's essentially a couple other cards <coughs> to really push the deck over the top but at least the core of your deck is very cheap so the the number of Salamangrates is probably much higher than Sky Striker or Thunder Dragon giving Thunder Dragon even more uh, disadvantage uh, just because of that just because of its its bigger weakness is the most represented uh, and also other things is like people might think Thunder Dragons are the best deck. I know for for a good couple weeks, Thunder Dragons were like looking like they were going to be the deck to beat. They don't look like that now, but maybe that's like the same Altergeist treatment we saw. That everybody was like, you know, I'm probably going to face a couple Altergeists during this tournament, so I'm just going to like put like six or seven side deck cards that just decimate that deck. Back row hate, red reboot. You know what I mean? Evenly matched. Um, and then because everybody had 
really strong sides for Altergeist every time. Uh, Altergeist just couldn't compete over a 10 round tournament. They just couldn't get it done consistently enough going against those broken cards that, that really punish them. So that we could see that. I think that's why we're seeing Thunder Dragon here. And again, we still see it in Top Cut. If we saw two in Top Cut, we'd be like, oh, okay, like Thunder Dragon's still there. Uh, but because it's one, it's like, oh. So I don't think it's the biggest deal. Do not fret. And the other thing is, where's the diversity? We saw in the top 32 of uh, why I say Chicago was the last one. Uh, literally insane. We had like 13 or 14 different decks in Top Cut. And I think this, this can mostly be attributed to the fact that... Um, we cut right to top 16. Um, so there is no top 32. That probably erases a good amount, possibly five decks from the playing field. And then we're looking at almost 10 decks splitting up top 32 or something. I mean, I don't remember. I didn't see exactly what it is, but something like that. Um, so that, that kind of clears that off a little bit. And also, the reason we see Salamangri and Sky Striker here is probably for one thing. Like, one, they're good. But I think the most important thing is they're consistent. Um, which we don't see as much with Thunder Dragon. I think Thunder Dragons are pretty consistent as a deck, but I think relative to Striker and Salamangrate, they're almost like as close to, you know, fully consistent as you can get. I mean, Salamangrate and Striker both with like one card combos. As long as you see Ray with Striker, like you're good to go. It doesn't even matter what the rest of your hand is, more or less. Uh, I mean, it does, but, you know, if you see Ray, you can play. Uh, and Salamangrids, you like we know Salamangrids have like multiple one card combos that allow them to play and same thing. So when you when we go through these and we look at everything, like you're like, yeah, they all like so easy to get any play start. You just need one card. Whereas Thunder Dragons kind of need to see like multiple card combos. You need to be not super lucky with dangers, but you need to be not unlucky with the dangers so uh, there are some factors there and yeah i think overall that's why we see salamander and sky striker getting it done here the most um but yeah there's nothing crazy i well, guess we should do a quick little uh shout out to the winner of this tournament here we'll go to uh this this gentleman here tyler pfeiffer uh ended up being getting first place with sky striker i didn't even say that i didn't even say sky striker out first place i just was going over top cut i totally forgot uh, yeah, Sky Striker won their second kind of premiere event in a row, which is uh, pretty interesting because we saw for a while, even when people considered them the best deck, they were unable to bring home uh, an official like first place win in any kind of premiere tournament. Uh, maybe there were one or two in there, but over the time period, you would have expected more. And finally, we see them take two in a row when people aren't really expecting it. So that's pretty pretty interesting to see. Um, there's not really much. I guess I could look for... Let me see if I can find... Let's see. UDS Las Vegas Top 64. If that works. There we go. Alright, cool. So, we got a lot of stuff here. They don't tell us what they played. But, let's at least look at Top... Th I wish it said what they played. Because that's kind of brutal. But uh, there's a guy, there's a ton of players here. Like, when you're going through this and you're looking and you're like, what do you mean? Like, even though there's not as many people in these tournaments, it's good. Like, you look at some of the names here, like Jesse Cotton, just outside of top, top 32. You've got um, Tem, uh, Temnik Bowden, Bowden Temnik, uh, a really well known player. Um, where are we going? Where are we going? Oh, this is just top 64 before they, like, this is just day two before they did, like, play out for everything. So, there's just a ton. Um, Hani Jawah Jahari, uh, he's a really well-known player. Uh, I don't even know all these names, but I know a lot of them are really well-known. Um, Marcus Hayden, I believe, is a really well-known player. There's just a ton. Like, if you know somebody, Ryan Levine, I know, is a really well-known player. Um... Like, there's just a ton here. And if you go down, you'll still find more and more people. So, Alex Simo, shout out to him. And I know Blade Yu-Gi-Oh, which was the, uh, or Blade YGO, uh, one of the new YouTube, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh channels that is up and coming. Uh, he's been sprouting up over the last couple months. I know he actually made it to the top 16, so shout out to him. Good for him. I don't know what his name is. I don't know what he was playing, but I believe he said he's going to make a deck profile pretty soon. So, hopefully we'll get that in the next couple of days. And, uh, I can't wait. I'll definitely be watching that. And uh, shout out to him overall. Cool. Um, 
yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I just want to get some kind of coverage out on this because we haven't really been getting news over the last week, you know, almost a week. Um, so I want to make a video on something, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll uh, stay on top of it. And let me know, guys, because I'm curious. I know a lot of YouTube channels make, you know, videos when like every every time like when a YCS is over or a bigger tournament is over and they go over the stuff I can do it too uh, just like kind of like this video just going over you know the results what we saw from every deck um, and I'm curious what you guys want like do you guys want me to uh, do that for every tournament for every bigger tournament at least giving you a quick little results video or uh, are you like leave that to everybody else like I don't need to I don't need to go after the same thing that you may see like 10 different videos of in your same feed. Let me know. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, my name's John. I'll see you in the next video. And if you like this one, go ahead and subscribe for more stuff from me. Cool. <laughs> Peace.